In this short video, what I'll take you through is this theorem called the Euler's theorem. Now this theorem, we haven't explicitly done it as part of our FRM curriculum, but it's behind the scenes of two very important applications that we've done of this theorem. So once I take you through this theorem and then lead you to those two applications, you will finally realize how important this theorem is. Okay. Now let's do this. Let's first state this theorem and then move on to its applications. Let's me, let me first you know, start by defining what a homogeneous function is. Let's assume that there is a function, let's say it's a multivariable function of n variables, x1, x2, all the way till xn. Now, let me imagine that I am scaling each of these inputs which go into the function, I mean x1, x2, all the way till xn, by the same factor t. That means x1, I'm scaling it up to t times x1, x2, scaling it to t times x2, and so on. Now, I'm just assuming that you know I'm saying scaling it up which means I'm assuming t is greater than 1 by all means you can scale it down as well that means t can be less than 1 as well okay all I'm saying is let me just multiply each of these inputs by a, the same multiplier t across inputs now what happens for the case of a homogeneous function if I scale all these inputs the value of the function, which let's say before I had done this scaling was f of x1, x2 all the way till xn, after the scaling it becomes t to the power k of its value prior to the scaling. Okay, So what just happened? I scaled every input by t. This is the t which is sitting here and there is a guy k which has come as a power or an exponent of the t. Now this k is referred to as the degree of this homogeneous function. It's a homogeneous function and it's homogeneous with a degree k. Okay, Homogeneity basically meant that, see, the t has basically come out of this expression. Take a look at this expression. I scaled all the inputs by t and the t actually came out of the function and it came out with a power of a k, okay? And that's that k is what we are referring to as the degree of this homogeneous function, okay? Now comes the Euler's theorem. The Euler's theorem, it tries to express this condition of homogeneity, and I mean, let's say, homogeneity with a degree k in an alternative way. It says that a function is homogeneous with degree k if this is true. That means the partial derivative of f with respect to S x1, that times x1, plus the partial derivative of f times x2, that times x2, if you take it all the way till the partial derivative of f with respect to xn, that times xn, for a homogeneous function of degree k, this sum, it comes out to k times the value of the function at x1, x2, all the way till xn, okay? How would you express this mathematical relation a bit more, let's say, intuitively or verbally? The way you would do it is this. The first term is the sensitivity of f to small changes in x1, okay? Now, if I were to, let's say, take this x1 from 0 all the way till x1, right? Then it's like saying that I am taking the sensitivity of f to x1 and multiplying it with the change that I have introduced. That means I went from 0 all the way till x1. And this sensitivity times x1 basically told me what was the impact of going from 0 to x1. Okay. Now this involved a big assumption and that was when I moved from 0 to x1, the sensitivity did not change, which actually is not right. The sensitivity of f with respect to any input x1 depends on the level of that x1 or for that matter even x2, x3 all the way till xn at which this sensitivity is computed. And I'm saying that when I went from a zero value of x1 all the way till its final value, which is this, this is the impact which it made on the value of the f. 
But then there is a twist here and that is when I did this for all these inputs x1 all the way till xn what I finally arrived at was k times the value of the f evaluated at x1 x2 all the way till xn okay and that k think of it to be the degree of this homogeneous function okay now this is one way of expressing homogeneity and this is another way okay now this is as far as the math is concerned now let's come back to financial risk management where have we encountered this go back to the sections that we you know did on coherent risk measures a risk measure that you define let's say by rho is a coherent risk measure if it satisfies four conditions okay it satisfies monotonicity it satisfies subadditivity it satisfies translational invariance and the important one in this context is that it satisfies positive homogeneity in this context of the Euler's theorem what does that mean it means that we had said positive homogeneity is a condition in which when I scale my portfolio let's call it x by a multiplier h we had said the risk also scales commensurately which means the risk as measured by rho of this scaled portfolio hx we had said it's h times the original risk level that means prior to the scaling happening okay so connect this with this formula that means imagine this rho to be the f that i am talking about imagine the t to be the h by which we scale our portfolio and imagine this x to be a portfolio which is let's say dependent on a number of factors these factors are x1 x2 all the way till xn so when i scale my portfolio up that means i invest more and more into it for example that means i am also scaling the impact which all these risk factors have on my portfolio we know risk factors can be thought of as positions which my portfolio can be broken down into or mapped into right so therefore if you connect these two equations you would agree that positive homogeneity is basically expressing this fact that my risk measure rho is a homogeneous function of degree 1 okay because here we have h to the power 1 remember here we have the multiplier to the power k and k stands for the degree okay so therefore you can actually refer to this homogeneity as a linear homogeneity or homogeneity with degree 1 okay okay so that's as far as connecting the Euler's theorem with risk measures is concerned now where do we apply it remember we have done this thing called allocation or attribution or budgeting both in frm part one and in frm part two i'll do two such applications in the next page but before i get down down to that let me just tell you where or, or the general schema of how i'll be applying the euler's theorem now if this risk measure which is like the function for me a function of let's say n inputs is homogeneous with degree 1 that means it a Euler's theorem tells me I can write down the homogeneous condition as something like this that means the partial derivative or the sensitivity of my risk measure to variations in let's say risk factor 1 that times the level of the risk factor 1 plus the partial derivative of my risk measure with respect to x2 that times x2 and so on if you add all of them up then it means that i should get remember there's a k here that means k is one i would get one times the total risk okay so this expression is basically telling me that euler's theorem can come in handy if i need to perform some kind of an allocation attribution or budgeting of my total risk which is this guy okay so this expression tells me that this guy you know this guy can act like a, an allocation of total risk to the first risk factor this guy can be the allocation to the second risk factor and so on an allocation 
does necessarily mean that the sum of all these allocations should be the same as the total and that's what the Euler's theorem is helping us guarantee okay so this was about what is Euler's theorem and how do we connect it to the world of financial risk okay now let's get down to two applications the first application which we encountered was actually in FRM part one we encountered this in this chapter on capital structure in banks where we were exposed to credit risk for the first time in this chapter we had defined unexpected loss to be the standard deviation of the loss coming from let's say the ith borrower or the ith let's say credit entity okay and therefore we had combined this these unexpected losses of the ith borrower or the entity and we had found the unexpected loss for the entire loan portfolio okay and that unexpected loss it came out to be an expression which looks something like this now in this expression note two things the first thing which you note is that it's not a linear function it's a non-linear function of n inputs and these inputs are ul1 ul2 all the way till uln okay these n inputs remember or connect this with the function that we introduced in the beginning of this video and we had said it has n inputs f x1 x2 all the way till xn here the x's are basically these ul's okay now what degree of homogeneity is this function satisfying first of all is it homogeneous you can actually pause this video and try and check if it is homogeneous or not take a look at the degree of each of these terms it's 2 2 and when you have the cross terms it's also 2 by degree I'm referring to the sum of the powers okay so if you were to scale each of these ul's by a constant factor lambda t whatever you will see that a lambda or a t is thrown out it will come out like this okay because it will become lambda square lambda square lambda times lambda lambda square take all the lambdas common take a square root and it'll come out as lambda which means it is homogeneous and since it throws out a lambda with the power of one it's homogeneous with a degree one so that part is fine now where is our problem our problem is when it comes to allocation or when it comes to attribution or budgeting ul of the entire portfolio is not equal to the sum of individual uls it's rather a function which looks something like this okay since it is not equal to the sum of individual uls you cannot take the ul to be a contribution measure it cannot be treated as the contribution measure of the ith borrower to the total risk of my portfolio and therefore if you remember that reading we actually went on to define something called the ulc it was called as the unexpected loss contribution and we defined it as the ulmc which was unexpected loss marginal contribution which is this guy the partial derivative in this framework that we are developing that times the xi in this case it's uli okay so this term is actually the dow f by tau xi the partial derivative this times the xi what does Euler's theorem tell us it tells us that if I were to sum all these terms I get 1 times f okay the total f and that's what we had in the end we had said that if you sum up all these ulc's you get the total ulp and therefore the ulc is a perfect candidate for you to take as a budgeting or a contribution kind of a number okay because it sums up to the total a similar kind of reasoning is what we encountered in the portfolio risk chapter in that chapter we were dealing with value at risk now individual value at risks I know I can calculate for let's say the ith sub portfolio or the ith position as something like this and I can aggregate all these wars for the entire portfolio using a non-linear expression which looks something like this again in this expression the degree of every term you know 2 2 2 it's it's the it's the total power is 2 for every term here okay and therefore if you were to scale all these vars by a constant factor lambda then the lambda will be thrown out as a single power you know the power of 1 here that means it is a homogeneous function of degree one 
again because it's not a simple summation i mean the var of the entire portfolio is not a simple summation of the individual vars you cannot treat the individual var as a risk contribution number and therefore in that chapter we defined something called a marginal var that marginal var was you know akin to our dow f by dow xi here we had used the the input to computing var not as the var we had used the input as the exposure okay remember this definition of marginal var it was the sensitivity of the portfolio var to tiny changes in the exposure to the ith risk factor and then we had scaled the marginal var with the xi to arrive at the component var now comes the euler's theorem if you were to add all the component vars up the euler's theorem tells us that for a function with degree 1 homogeneous with degree 1 this sum gets you the total var and therefore you can treat the component var as a, some kind of a contribution of the ith portfolio or sub portfolio to the total portfolio risk okay so this is what i refer to as the you know the use of euler's theorem in risk budgeting and risk allocations so if you were you know thinking that the sum of these contributions that we are defining in the case of unexpected loss or in the case of value at risk, they sum up to the total by coincidence, then it's not the case. They sum up to the total because we are in fact dealing with homogeneous functions of degree one and the Euler's theorem tells us that these contributions that we have defined, if you add them up across different uh, risk factors or different sub portfolios they do sum up to the total okay